This is Carlisle from your Fast Life Car Channel and this is the new 2016 Ford GT. I'm going to give you an in-depth tour of this car, the car that stole the show at the 2015 Ford International Auto Show. Now, that's not actually the name of the show, but I'm calling it the Ford International Auto Show because essentially this show has been taken over by Ford. All anybody is talking about are the new Ford vehicles, the new Ford Mustang, the GT350R, the new Ford GT, and also the new Raptor, the F-150 Raptor. So amazing times here at the North American International Auto Show where Ford pretty much has been dominating. So we're gonna talk about this car in detail. We're gonna be talking also about the history of the Ford GT40, which this car is based on in other videos right here on this channel. So you definitely wanna subscribe and stay tuned for that. This is Carlisle with your Fast Life car channel brought to you by ProjectOneAuto.com. If you wanna go and get some great deals on some awesome cars, whether it's Acura, Ford, Porsche, Lamborghini, Ferrari, you name it, you wanna to go to ProjectOneAuto.com, especially considering there's special discounts for my subscribers. I'm not only a fan, I'm also a happy customer. I'm not sure that they're gonna be getting a Ford GT anytime soon, but they have cars like Lamborghinis and Ferraris as well. So definitely check them out, projectoneauto.com. For the 2015 North American International Auto Show, Ford has brought back the iconic Ford GT. This is the car, quite different than the GT40, AKA the Ferrari killer that it was based on, which sat a mere 40 inches off the ground. This car is actually a little bit bigger than that car, just like the version that was brought back in 2005. So this car again is called the Ford GT, not GT40 like the original. And I'll get into the reason why the name change was in a future video. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. And we're also going to be talking about this abomination of V6 engine that this car actually has for a power plant. Well, that's what the V8 fans are saying. They're very upset that this car has a V6 engine. It should have a V8. Why does it have a V6? Well, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna give you good reasons why it has a V6 instead of a V8 and why you should not even care about that. Let's break it all down quick and painless, but not like the quick and painless that you were promised at your last tooth extraction. Is that candy in your mouth? Anyway, here it goes. So if we go to the front of the car here, we're not gonna see anything of any interest. I mean, we just have some very great looking lights on there. Got some carbon fiber in the front, but there's really nothing in the front that's gonna put any of the current Ferrari incarnations in your mirror because the engine's in the back, just like it's always been on the GT40 and the GT that was brought around 2005. So the engine in the rear, let's talk about that power plant. Now, first of all, for those of you Camry fans, I'm gonna disappoint you. I know you're gonna go and brag and say, hey, my car has a V6 engine, just like the Ford GT. This is not the same kind of engine that you have in your Camry. This car puts out north of 600 horsepower. Now, obviously, a Lamborghini can definitely give this car a run for its money in the horsepower game. However, even though a Lamborghini driver might scoff at this car and say, it only has 600 horsepower. The thing is, for a true car enthusiast, you know horsepower is just a number. Just as you can have a 70-year-old bodybuilder show up an overweight 20-year-old, this potentially very lightweight car might just show up the rambunctious little number from Lamborghini with the name straight from the Spanish weather channel, the Huracan. Sorry, Dr. M3, but anyway. This engine is based on a platform that Ford has already proven in the racing world. Again, don't let the V6 fool you. This car is no sleeper and the engine is no joke. Ford says you can expect a very wide power band and an impressive torque delivery. Okay, so some of you might not be convinced yet. You still want that V8 engine. How about this? When I said Ford had race proven this engine, I didn't clarify what I meant by that. How about seven podium wins? A win at the 12 hour Sebring. Three wins at IMSA championship last year. You still want that V8 back? Do you really? Trust me, I love the V8 too, but let's not kid ourselves. The Dukes, Dukes of Hazzard was great when I was a kid, but it's time to move on, however. Uncle Jesse and Daisy Duke, you know, they're only good for a laugh right now, unless you're really, really bored. I mean, it's time to move on, I think. This engine is definitely 
a potent engine and nothing to dismiss, absolutely nothing to dismiss at all. I would make a horrible salesman. I just finally sold you on the engine and now I'm gonna ruin it by telling you this car is an automatic. Oh, an automatic, no! <laughs> so this car has a seven speed dual clutch transmission. It's the only flavor of this ice cream that you can get. My feelings and that are, I'm a hardcore manual guy, but if this car is capable of the violent, aggressive shifts like you see on the Lamborghini cars, I might be on board for this deal. Ford says it's not looking for the best in class power to weight ratio. They're actually looking for one of the best power to weight ratios out of any car. Really Ford? Does any include the Hennessy Venom GT? Yes, I went there. Ford is playing dirty with this beast of a car. So I'm right back at you, Henry. Okay, so beneath the glass sits not golf clubs or kittens or anything special. No, it's just an over 600 horsepower twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6, which is only the most powerful production EcoBoost engine ever. That's ever as in subscribing to your Fast Life car channel is the best thing you could ever do. Okay, that's a bad analogy. Okay, so the engine is nothing to scoff at and it sounds great. Go listen to Shmi 150's video. He has a great video where you can actually hear the sound of this engine and I think you're not gonna be disappointed. So check him out. He's my buddy, he's got great content, really hard worker. Check him out, Shmi 150. So, what else is on the menu? Funny you should ask, my new subscriber. This 600 horsepower main course comes with succulent sides. Air is channeled down those sexy panels on the side that you see and right into the intakes. Now, you think that these panels are just for looks, but you are wrong. They're very, very functional. These panels are all about showing the air who is boss. The air is led right into the intake and straight out of the exhaust. But all I wanna know is, Will it flame? By the way, wanna see how to barbecue your frenemies with a motorcycle? Check out this video that I did on my bike channel with a supercharged Kawasaki H2R doing just that. By the way, that bike has almost a little bit more, actually a little bit more than half the horsepower of this car. That's how amazing that motorcycle is. Anyway, back to the succulent sides. Let's travel a little bit south of the border where you have some carbon fiber on the menu. So again, this car is all about the Colin Chapman factor. Lotus light in an American car. Aren't American cars supposed to be all about big block engines and the fastest roll speeds in the corners? That's roll as in you better hope you have some good Brembo's on that American muscle when the corner comes up. Otherwise, the only muscle you're gonna need is muscle for kicking that jam door out at the bottom of a cliff. Ouch, I better say something nice before I get kicked out of the Ford booth. Now, th that's easy to do because there's a lot more goodies on the menu. So lightweight ingredients galore. That is what you have here. Carbon fiber and aluminum are the name of the game, but apparently lightweight wheels are not. That is reserved for the new Mustang GT350R. Say what? Well, relax, relax. No promises, but a little birdie told me that these wheels might be going the way of the Dodo Bird or the Pinto. So keep an eye on your Fast Life car channel because this summer, we're gonna be showing you the official final version, the production version of this car. This car is extremely close to production, but it's not quite there yet. I don't know what the official version is gonna look like, but just know that there might be a few tweaks on this car before it actually hits the streets. Now, from what I'm being told, very likely, unless you pay close attention to the details, the final version of this car might look exactly like this to you. If you're looking at this a little bit closer, then you might notice, hey, those mirrors are different, or those are different wheels. But for the most part, you're seeing very close to what's gonna actually be on the streets. Now, one of the issues with the, the previous model, the Ford GT, the doors were, you kinda had this kind of overhang type of thing and when you're coming out it's kind of you know hitting you on the head type of deal so with this model the doors are actually dihedral doors so they actually go out and up so that's going to allow you to get in and out of the car much easier now as far as comfort on the inside you have the seats that are actually molded right into the tub so the seats aren't actually adjustable but the controls 
actually move towards you. So you can actually move the steering column forward and away from you. And the same thing with the pedals as well to adjust to you. Now the steering wheel is basically like an F1 steering wheel, like what you might see in something like a Ferrari. So you have all the controls available to you right there on the steering wheel. You have carbon fiber trim on the side. Now all these angles look really nice. You look, it's very dramatic and it, look, it, look, it looks great to look at, but it's functional. This is not just styling, you know, just, just something to make the car look cool. This is all very, very functional. You have these panels which guide the air straight up into the intake of the car. You also have this channel, these channels on both sides of the car. They basically cut straight through the car, straight to the front, all the way to the back. And then you have wings. The car actually has wings right here. This part here actually is gonna give you more downforce. You have companies like Bugatti and McLaren who both make some really exotic cars with state-of-the-art technology. This, however, is just a Ford, right? Wrong. Both of those European cars feature active aerodynamics technology. For example, they both feature a rear spoiler that amplifies the braking effect by going vertical during rapid deceleration. You might now say to me, cool story, bro. That's only because you didn't realize that this car is actively participating in the merger of aircraft avionics and automotive applications such as this. Yes, the dihedral doors go up and so does the spoiler shortly after completing your 240 mile per hour run down the straight and preparing to throw this potential featherweight into the corner. Chris Harris, I'm talking to you. That is your mission, should you choose to accept it. By the way, subscribe to Chris Harris's channel. He's a great guy, he's an automotive artist, and he is a champion wordsmith and quite humble too. So definitely go check him out. He's got his own YouTube channel right now, so go look him up. Now, if we were to step inside this vehicle, lift up those dihedral doors and step right inside, we would be sitting on seats that are molded right into the tub of the car. Again, it's all about lightweight. Now, how light is it? Now, how light is it? I heard you the first time, but there's nothing to report yet. Ford is actually keeping that information secret right now. However, I do have a couple of fresh US notes to give to the Ford CEO to maybe get him to spill the beans. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram for any developments on that front, but don't hold your breath. I've taken a look at Ford's current lineup and I think the CEO might not be needing my lunch money anytime soon, but you never know. If the new NSX tears this car a new one on the track, maybe he might just need me to subsidize his meals. Well, meal. If we go to the middle of the car, we have, again, a carbon fiber passenger cell and forward and aft, we have aluminum subframes and carbon fiber body panels. Well, there you have it, folks. Ford has spoken just two letters, GT. You might read that as maybe Grand Touring or something like that, but me, I read that GT as go tell. That's go tell the competition this means war. Ferrari, sto parlando con voi. Siete stati avvertiti. With the Roadster version coming out in 1996. Some corner to corner. To me, it's almost like being in a Formula One. Uh, I'm a big fan of Formula One. When you, when you hit that first gear, you can feel it just snaps you back with the power of this car. Mm. Well, my name is Carlisle and I am an avid car enthusiast.